Hi everyone, for this video we're going to talk about some of the common non-glial brain tumors. We'll just cover a few of the most common ones. So commonly you can have non-glial tumors. They can be intraaxial, meaning in the brain parenchyma, or extraaxial, as in outside of the brain parenchyma. They can be associated with a systemic disease, and you'll see that some of the most common ones are going to be associated with a, a systemic disease. The most common non-glial brain tumors you're going to have are going to be CNS lymphoma, metastases, or meningioma. We'll start with a case of a 51-year-old woman with HIV, nausea, and vomiting, and dizziness. Here you have some MR images through the posterior fossa. You have a flare on the left and a T2 on the right. You have this big expansile mass in the posterior fossa here, a lot of surrounding edema. A lot of mass effect on the fourth ventricle on the T2, that's confirmed. If you come up a little bit higher, what you're going to see is additional masses. So you have another mass here in the left anterior basal ganglia and caudate, probably another mass here along the margin of the lateral ventricle, something else going on in the right thalamus as well. Here's pre and post contrast. If you go back to that level of the cerebellum, what you see is a Hypo intense area, which enhances very avidly on the post contrast imaging. Very solid enhancement. If you come higher, look at that area around the margin of the ventricles. What you'll see is confluent enhancement around the margin of the ventricles. Interestingly, that mass in the left basal ganglia is not enhancing very much, but most of this tumor is enhancing very avidly. Here on diffusion, what you'll note is those areas are very bright on DWI, somewhat dark on ABC, so you think that that's a very tightly cellular packed material. Here we just look at a little bit of perfusion. What you'll see is there are definitely areas of hyperperfusion related to this, some areas of central hypoperfusion uh, in the left basal ganglia, that area is hyperperfused, at least relative to the adjacent white manner, so there's some hyperperfusion in this tumor. This is a case of primary CNS lymphoma. It's a relatively rare disorder, but has a relatively dismal prognosis. It's associated with HIV, uh, although the incidence is decreasing with better HIV treatment. Most commonly, you have uh, it's a B-cell lymphoma, and uh, those are directly invading the parenchyma. Often, if you do a lumbar puncture, you'll get malignant cells in the CSF. Common locations where you'll see it, uh, we see a lot of them in this case, uh, in the basal ganglia and the periventricular white matter. Lymphoma is one of the two uh, sort of classic lesions that evolve the corpus callosum along with glioblastoma. On imaging, what you'll frequently have is multiple enhancing lesions like we saw. They can be T2 hypointense. We saw a reduced diffusion in this case with bright on DWI and dark on ADC. Uh, you have a little bit of a difference based on whether patients are immunocompetent or compromised. Immunocompetent patients tend to have more solid enhancement while patients with HIV or other immune compromise tend to have more cystic uh, necrosis, kind of peripheral rim enhancement. Here we have a little question uh, to go along with this case. Uh, these are two uh, MR spectra. I just want you to take a look, tell me which one is normal. Uh, so clearly B is the normal spectrum in this case. Uh, the three peaks you're most concerned about are choline, creatine, and NAA. Choline is a marker of cell turnover. Creatine is an energy metabolite, which is a relatively uh, normal baseline. And uh, NAA is a marker of normal neurons. Uh, here you have a markedly abnormal spectrum. You really don't see much choline. You don't see much NAA at all. You've got a creatine peak. And you've got lactate here, which is an inverted peak here around 1.3. Uh, so that is the abnormal spectrum. Uh, this is a spectrum as you might get in a case like lymphoma. So this is the spectrum from this case. Uh, so essentially you've got some lactate there. You have no normal neurons and uh, this is very, uh, very elevated uh, peaks there or very decreased normal peaks. Uh, here you see a normal. Uh, this is from the same patient in a more normal appearing area of white matter from the contralateral side. Again, on spectroscopy, these are the three things you need to know about. Uh, NAA is a normal neuronal marker. A creatine is a marker of normal cells. And uh, choline is a cell membrane and high cell turnover marker. Uh, so every malignancy tends to have high choline and low NAA. So that 
can limit the usefulness of spectroscopy. Uh, anything that has a high cell turnover, even inflammatory processes like MS, can have elevated choline. Now we'll have a case of a 65-year-old woman who awoke feeling as if a train had hit her, and now she has a headache and uh, dizziness and imbalance. So here you see a flare, a diffusion image from the central portion of the brain through the basal ganglia. We have a relatively low T2 mass here, another low T2 mass here with some surrounding edema. You'll see that they're not too bright on DWI. Maybe this has a little bit of brightness around the rim. This one's relatively normal on DWI. Here we have pre and post contrast imaging. So you see that mass that we pointed out here is a hypo intense on pre contrast and enhances avidly on post contrast. The lesion of the left basal ganglia also enhances, has a little bit of a different enhancement pattern, uh, centrally necrotic and peripherally enhancing. Here we just see some uh, additional coronal images from the same patient. You see those same masses in a different projection. You see, again, areas of uh, necrosis there and uh, centrally uh, sort of necrotic areas with peripheral enhancement. Uh, this is a case of metastases. Uh, this particular patient had breast cancer. Uh, metastatic disease to the brain is uh, spread from other organs. The most common lesions you're going to see are from lung or breast cancer, but melanoma is also common. If you see lesions that have hemorrhage, then you should think about renal cell metastases or melanoma. On imaging, you tend to have well-defined enhancing masses with a fair amount of surrounding edema. They can certainly have uh, associated hemorrhage. Now, an interesting fact that you should know is that approximately 40 or 50% of them are going to be solitary. So just because you have one, that doesn't make it a primary glial tumor. And most of these are going to be in the cerebral hemispheres, but the cerebellum and basal ganglia are also common locations. We'll move on to a 69-year-old woman with word-finding difficulty and memory changes. Now here you see uh, T2 uh, images through the tentorium. Uh, right here you see a little bit of thickening of the left tentorium here and a very low T2 mass extending into the middle cranial fossa from the medial aspect here. Then you have a lot of surrounding edema in the left temporal lobe going up even into the more superior aspects of the temporal lobe and the insular white matter and the basal ganglia. On pre and post contrast imaging, what you'll see is a relatively iso-intense mass, as well as it's pretty similar to gray matter. And on post contrast imaging, it enhances very avidly. Uh, it's very solid. You've got a few, a few little pedunculated areas. And then also along the tentorium, you'll note this kind of thickened region of tentorium that's also abnormal and also enhancing. This is a classic finding for an extraaxial mass. It's called a dural tail. And that leads you to believe that this is probably a meningioma. Although in this case, you can tell how it can be often difficult to tell if a meningioma is, or if a mass is extraaxial or intraaxial. Here you just see additional images through that same area. Again, post-contrast T1 images. You see the involvement of the tentorium. You see extension along the petrous portion of the uh, temporal bone there. Again, a dural tail, and you see the temporal lobe itself is significantly displaced and has a lot of edema. You see the asymmetry of the lateral ventricles here telling you that there is significant mass effect. So as I mentioned already, this is a meningioma. If you're just talking all brain tumors, all comers, it's the most common brain tumor. It's also the most common extraaxial mass. We talked about many of the imaging features already, but just to recap them, you have a relatively homogeneous mass that can be T2 bright or T2 variable. If it has calcification, which happens about 25% of the time, then you can have areas that are dark. Adjacent hyperostosis is a nice clue. If you see a new bone, that's common for meningiomas. They tend to be avidly enhancing, hyperperfused, and can even be FTG avid on PET. When you see these masses, you want to report if there's mass effect, if there's bone involvement, and if there's adjacent parenchymal edema or enhancement. If you see that, that makes it more likely that there's involvement of the adjacent parenchyma. Meningiomas are graded into three grades. You have grade one, which is your typical meningiomas that are treated with resection. Grade two and grade three have higher rates of cellular turnover, so they're growing more quickly. These are called atypical for grade two and anaplastic for grade three. 
they can have brain invasion, and grade 2 and grade 3 are treated with radiation after their resection. You cannot reliably tell on imaging what the grade of a meningioma is going to be, although the greater degree of parenchymal enhancement and edema you have suggests brain invasion and suggests a higher grade. There are many other tumors that you can get in the brain. We're not going to cover them here. We can cover them at a later time. This is just a list of some of them. You have some of the interventricular tumors, like uh, subependable giant cell tumors, like you see in tuberous sclerosis, central neurocytoma, ependymomas, and subependymomas. Uh, PNAT is kind of a, a deprecated tumor, but uh, is a small blue cell tumor that you can get in the brain parenchyma. Uh, medulloblastomas and hemangioblastomas are common posterior fossa tumors. Gangliocytomas, again, are rare uh, cortical tumors, and uh, ATRTs are also aggressive posterior fossa tumors. Uh, just be aware that these exist. Uh, you can spend more time reading about those uh, at a later time, but they're certainly much more com or much less common than the ones we've talked about already. In general, if you can tell someone if someone has a high grade or versus a low grade tumor, you've done most of the work for them. People need to know if uh, something needs to be dealt with on a relatively urgent basis or whether it can wait for a little bit. Thanks for watching this video. Up next, we'll just recap some of the common imaging scenarios you might run into with brain tumors and how you might form a differential diagnosis. If you enjoyed our video, be sure to subscribe, check out our other videos on our YouTube channel, or check out the website at learnerradiology.com.